Hi, I'm John Stocks. I'm so honored to be introducing an icon in the civil rights movement and a personal hero of mine, a man whose commitment to racial justice has been unmatched for nearly 50 years, Mr. Morris Dees. When the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964, it granted equal rights to all citizens of the United States, on paper. But in reality, black Americans still faced discrimination and inequality. Civil rights activists protested with marches and sit-ins. But one Alabama man had a different idea. He decided to bring the protest to the courtroom. Young lawyer Morris Dees sued Montgomery's segregated YMCA, who chose to fill their swimming pools with dirt rather than admit black children. And he won. In 1971, he founded the Southern Poverty Law Center. In one of their first cases, they sued the Alabama legislature to create single-member voting districts, enabling blacks to have a voice at the state level. In 1974, 15 black legislators were elected, up from a previous level of zero. He sued to integrate the all-white Alabama state troopers, long a symbol of oppression, and used by Governor Wallace to beat back protesters. After 23 years and a U.S. Supreme Court ruling, the state troopers now have the highest percentage of minority officers in the country. In the 1980s, Dees set his sights on some of the most violent white supremacist groups in the nation. He sued the United Clans of America after its members lynched Michael Donald in Mobile. Filed in civil court on behalf of Donald's mother, the $7 million judgment bankrupted the United Clans, the same group responsible for the 1963 church bombing that killed four little girls in Birmingham. Over the years, the SPLC filed dozens of lawsuits against the Klan, the Aryan Nation, and other hate groups, crippling or destroying them in the process. And they weren't the only ones to pay a price for their hatred. More than two dozen people have been sent to prison for plots to kill Morris Dees and threats against the SPLC. But the fight goes on. Today, Dees and his organization monitor the activities of over 1,600 domestic extremist groups, seeing hundreds of hate groups spring up whenever one was cut down, forced the Southern Poverty Law Center to consider other ways of combating hate. They developed a program called Teaching Tolerance. It offers resources to educators and works to support equitable school experiences for all children. The SPLC has also expanded their focus to include landmark victories in court cases involving LGBT issues, advocating for children's rights, migrant workers, and the disabled, and ensuring equality for women. One man, one idea. Sometimes that's all it takes to change the world. Mr. Dees could not be with us this evening, but we're honored to have on his behalf the director of the Southern Poverty Law Center's Teaching Tolerance Pro How many of you have used that? I used it with my sixth grader. The Teaching Tolerance Program, Maureen Costello. I am honored to accept this award on behalf of Morris Dees. Morris, as you saw, founded the Southern Poverty Law Center in 1971 to seek justice for the most vulnerable people in society. Today, nearly 50 years later, the SPLC continues its legal work, but our mission has grown to include fighting hate and teaching tolerance. And the visionary behind it all is Morris Dees. After the victories of the civil rights movement in the 1960s, as you may know, white supremacist groups like the Klan retrenched. But they reemerged in the 1980s. And when they did, Morris sued these groups on behalf of victims. 
He won stunning victories that sent many of them into bankruptcy. But by the early 1990s, Morris saw that the fight against hate could not be won in the courtroom alone. We needed to do more. We needed to do it earlier. We needed to work in the classroom. And Teaching Tolerance was the first program of its kind. Today, the ideas that the program advanced, appreciation for diversity, the importance of nurturing empathy, these are widely embraced. But today, we're also concerned with justice. So our work has moved beyond ending bigotry to ending the structural racism that holds too many young people back. Today, through both the Teaching Tolerance Program and through the SPLC's legal work, we seek equity and full opportunity to our nation's most vulnerable students, too often children of color living in poverty. This work for children and in education is what Morris is most proud of. He sees Teaching Tolerance with its focus on the future as his most lasting legacy. Our work for civil and human rights continues, thanks to Mara Stees. In, in the words of the prophet Amos, words etched on the wall of the Civil Rights Memorial back home in Montgomery, Alabama, we'll continue working until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream.